Hey, what's up, you guys? Thank you for tuning in. This is Gabriel Vision Tune Lamet, and I'm here on your art channel, Vision Tune Art World. Before we get into today's video, I do want to ask that you go ahead and subscribe. Also, hit a like on this video and leave me a comment. If you've got questions, I would love to reach out and answer them for you. Also, go ahead and find me on the social media platforms. I can be found on Instagram as well as Facebook, and all you have to do is search Gabriel Vision Tune. Lamette and you'll find me there that way you'll know when I have new content coming out because I've got a lot more in store for you so without further ado we're gonna go ahead and get into this brand new tutorial and I'm really excited about this tutorial because first of all it's featuring one of my favorite animated characters uh, from growing up and that is Darkwing Duck for all of those who used to love watching Chippendales Rescue Rangers and DuckTales and Tailspin you guys know exactly exactly who Darkwing Duck is. And so I figured that I would show you guys one of my techniques for being able to color in my illustrations that I've inked by you just scanning it and then going into Photoshop and bringing it to life. This is literally going to be a video that gives you the step-by-step -step process of being able to do that, what types of things to look for. So this is a very valuable video if you are an illustrator or a person that likes cartoons and you want better, faster methods of being able to go into Photoshop and color your designs, this is going to be the video for you. So without further ado, enjoy. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and get into this tutorial on how to be able to color in your drawing, your cartoon style drawing inside of Photoshop. And as I've already shared with you, this is one of my favorite cartoon characters growing up, Darkwing Duck. So I thought this would be kind of a fun thing for me to be able to not only display how to do it, but it'll just be fun to be able to work on this guy because he's just kind of cool all the way around. So what we'll do is we'll first of all start off with a new layer. I do like to label my layers most of the time when I'm doing work. So if I have to go back and edit something or add some different effects I know exactly which layer I'm going to so that if my layers can get into 10 to uh, I'd say 10 plus layers it's easy for me to be able to locate the exact one I'm looking to work with so what we're gonna do is start off with the duck bill so I've already created that layer and called it uh, duck bill itself and then what you'll do is go back to your background which is going to be practically your template base you can use your magic wand tool and then you go ahead and select the layers that you're going to be looking to fill. Then what you'll do, because I already have it preset at an orange color, is then from there I go ahead and fill that layer that I created to that orange. Now, one of the things that I do appreciate being able to do things in Photoshop is working with some of the layer styles as far as um, beveling and things like that really allows for you to be able to kind of cheat in what you're doing. Now, if I go ahead, because this is still set from the last time I was doing some work, um, what I like to do is go in and make sure that if I'm going to be using black, I have it all the way to black and as a multiplied shadow mode for that particular feature because it allows for me to get a truer depth and as you can see as I'm moving this back and forth I'm already starting to get a little bit of depth to his duck bill as you go along and then what I found as far as the highlight mode for the bright color and that's if you're going to be doing any kind of highlighting of that nature it could be yellow highlights red highlights neon green highlights I like to go in and change it to linear dodge and so it adjusted how it's going to read within here which will really make for a cool um, effect of it kind of being 3d but not exactly but you're able to cheat while you're doing it so the next thing I like to do is go in and I like to affect the stroke I got this kind of mindset from Disney I noticed as a kid when I was drawing that Disney they would do a lot of um, strokes on the inside of their artwork and they're always some type of complementary color so what I mean by a complementary color is like right now it's on this color that doesn't look too good when you try and bring it into here obviously that won't work but if I get down into some of these colors in here now I've got the color showing through that's pretty complementary 
Now, right now it's set on the outside. That does not work for what we're doing. You wanna put it on the inside. And then as you can see, you can start to control how big that's going to end up actually being in there. Now, I'm gonna just adjust this just a little bit more so it's not as dominant, but it still gives a little bit of color variation as a stroke outline on the inside. Now, one thing that you're gonna notice, especially if you did this the way I did, that's scanning the actual uh, drawing. Sometimes there are gonna be little dots that show up here. That means that when I selected it from the actual template itself, there was some kind of black dot on the scan. And the easy way to be able to get rid of that is simply go ahead and trace around where you see those spots at. And then, you go ahead and fill it all to the color you want. And as you see, it disappeared there. So it makes for a very easy way of being able to correct what you have going on there. Now, something that you're gonna see me do a lot within this video is save. You should always, always look to save. Uh, during my rookie years of doing graphics and things like that, sometimes I would get so trapped into my designs that something could happen and the computer would crash, especially those old school computers that I was used to working on. And then now you've lost everything and you do the iconic no to uh, the fact that you lost it. So you wanna avoid that save often. That's just a rule of thumb. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into his actual feather area. So with that being the case, we'll go ahead and click on the template click on the areas that we're going to be looking to fill to white so that would end up being the face as you just saw his hands right here and then his lower body i go ahead and label it and i'll just say feathers uh, and then i go ahead and fill that to white so now that i've already filled it to white and you may not notice it because obviously it's white on white right now but will go in and start to manipulate it with a bevel again. So as you see, I clicked on the bevel and it's already starting to show a variation in the actual uh, feathered area that we've just selected. And what I would wanna do in this case is maybe turn down the shadowing just a little bit more and then maybe manipulate that just a little bit so then you see a little bit more of the details coming through and then from there you can go in and uh go ahead and put your stroke on the inside now for whites i always do some type of light gray so that you get that kind of detail in there but you're able to not kind of take away from what you're doing. So as you can see, if I zoom in a bit, you're able to see right in there where that gray is starting to show, but it still allows for you to be able to have some of that white there. Now, again, as I said earlier, you see some of these dots showing up here. You just go in and simply select that area, fill it to white. Now they're magically gone, they've disappeared and then you'll just go ahead and check for the rest. See, so there's more within here. And let me go ahead and zap those babies on out of there. Okay, I missed one. See, even veterans mess up, but it's all good. I can go right back and get it done. Okay, so cool. Uh, so I've been able to go in and correct that. So as you can already see, we're starting to see some of the texture of Darkwing Duck come alive. Now let's go ahead and look to get into his lighter purple. So I'm gonna go in and choose a lighter, that's kind of pink, here we go. So like a lighter purple, maybe right about there. And then I'll go and create a brand new layer and I'm gonna put light purple. And then go ahead to my template and select the area that I'm going to be looking to make that color. And so I've got that right there. I've got this right here. Um, and then I've got to make sure I hit his collar. So we've got that included in it. And then also his mask as well. So what I'll do is go in and again do a fill on that. Now, sometimes with Photoshop and you have to be extremely, extremely careful is you'll select a color and then once you've actually got that color going, then it's something totally different because this is looking a little bit more pink 
and his purple is a little bit more matte. So what I did was I went into the hues and saturations right now and I'm gonna work with it that way. So now it's changed the color just a little bit to make it a bit more matte and not as bright. And then I've gone in to turn down the light on it just a little bit so it gives me a bit more of what I'm looking for. Now, before I move forward, one thing that I do want to make sure that I do correct is uh, Darkwing Duck, actually his eyelids are white as well and they go with his feathers. So I just want to correct that and I've selected that off of the template and now I've just added this back to the feather layer and boom, now there you go, we've got it there. So back onto the light purple part. So with this, then you'll go on in just like we did earlier. You'll go ahead and select that purple area and then start manipulating what that actually will look like. Now you see up in here, you're getting a whole bunch of super beveled stuff because of buttons and things like that. Actually, that will work. And sometimes you're gonna have to play around with this to see what's really going to give you the effect that you want. And sometimes manipulating it can be you turning it all the way up like I just did practically there then turning down some of the darks or turning down some of the lights you see so it's manipulating that in there but highlights always work for some reason when I'm doing uh, any of my drawings within Photoshop and so like something like this right here that works out perfectly for what I'm looking to do and then again I'll go back on in and see you see a lot of those dots starting to show up uh, again, that's fine. We've already gone over what you do to fix that and we'll do that shortly. So then I can go in and start to manipulate what my stroke color will be. Now on something like this that's uh, that lighter purple, I want something that's contrast. And that's one thing you're going to always want to make sure that you do is pick a outlining color that gives you some good contrast because that does help add to depth within your drawing because what you're doing here is not exactly 3D but it's giving you some textured colors that work out rather nicely. So what I'll do just so I can make sure that as I'm building the colors back in where those dots are, go in and select what you've manipulated if you ever have to manipulate the color to get it closer to what you want. So then as you go in to go ahead and take these dots out, you're going to get the right color versus you uh, getting the color that you originally had selected. So I'm going to go ahead and get on rid of all these little dots in here as we've done before. And then we'll continue to push on. So give me a moment and we'll be right there. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll get into his cape. Now, as you see, he's starting to come together a bit here now. You've got some really neat details showing. Let me go ahead and save so you guys don't hear a grown man cry on the internet. That would be terrible. So anyway, let me go ahead and go on to the next. So then we'll get into his dark purple. So uh, I've got the new layer that I've already placed there. And then now we'll go ahead and select our area that will have the darker purple show up for. And so it's just for really and truly the outside of his cape because actually the inside of his cape is kind of like a, a hot pink type of deal. So we have that there and then we'll go in and we'll select a darker purple. So that might show up actually rather well. And let's take a look. Yes, it does. It shows up just fine. Um, maybe though, let me see, um, let me go ahead and just make it just a little bit darker. There we go. All right. And then, so we'll go ahead and go into our effects with the layer style here and hit our bevel. And as you can see, it's really starting to come together with, uh, some of the depth here that is showing. And so we have that there now able to show up quite nicely for him. And then we go ahead and with the stroke, we'll go ahead and make it just a little bit lighter. So it gives a bit of contrast to see the details 
of his actual cape itself. So now again, we'll go in and we'll select this color because I did manipulate, again, I did manipulate the color that we're dealing with here. And then we can go ahead and get rid of some of these annoying pesky little dots that are in our drawing. So here we go. Alright, let me see. We're almost there, you guys. Okay, I believe, yes that is, that's all of our dots. So again, go ahead and save. All right, so now that we've got that saved, this is really starting to pull itself together in a neat way. So the next thing we'll be doing is looking to hit his buttons themselves. So his buttons are like a yellowish gold. So um, I'll stick more to the yellow because when I think about Darkwing, he's, those buttons are pretty darn yellow, more versus the gold. So again, we'll go ahead and create another layer and I'm just gonna say buttons. And then we'll go to our template. Let's go ahead and magic wand tool this bad boy here. Oop, see, messed up there. So let me zoom in, because that will probably be the thing. I'm acting like I've got young guy eyes. Okay, there we go, see. All right, so there and there, and then we can go in and fill those buttons. Now, uh, once we've gotten a chance to do that, then we go in and we go ahead and set our bevels into place. So, we've got the bevels there. I'm gonna turn up some of that shadowing. Now, one thing that we can do is we can manipulate what that shadowing is going to look like because you can actually not just settle for blacks or anything like that. You can actually go in and manipulate the color and then change the properties on this. And you never know what you're going to deal with or come up with when you're doing something like this. but you can sometimes find certain cool uh, hues and saturations and colors that you'll end up getting within it. Um, but it really, again, it depends on what kind of colors you're dealing with. So you can kind of see what I've been able to do here. And I'm gonna mess with the depth. So now you can see where it's really starting to change its form and its shape within there which I think is kind of a nice little feature, then go on in and set your stroke in place. Not green, brother, not green. There we go. <laughs> so you go ahead and do that and then go ahead and turn it on down so then you get the details of what you're looking for. Now, because I mess with the properties of what we had before, it's made that kind of red, which doesn't work. But as you can see, if I change that color up just a tad bit, now we've got something that's a little bit gold and suitable uh, for that entire area there. So, let me see here. So that works out really good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of speed up this process a little bit so we can continue with this and you'll be able to see more of what we're able to do to bring this to life before we start getting into some of the shadowing details. So we'll be right back with the real footage.
Okay, so we're coming along with this at this point. What we're going to do now is because, as you can see, if I zoom in, uh, things still look rather rough, and I'm quite sure all of you would agree. So, um, and when I say rough, I'm talking about like the details of the line and everything, because with the scan, I scan this at a high resolution, so it's picking up everything from the grain of the paper to how the ink hit the paper when I ink this on end. So what we would want to do in this situation is, uh, I've made a copy of the template background here that just has the image cut out of Darkwing. And so what you'll do is you'll have a copy there, so then you still have something to work with as far as the template base for being able to use your magic wand tool. But you can go in, and let me zoom in before I do this, and go to your levels. And if you go to your levels, you can just make the whole entire thing black. And now we've got a complete contrast of what we had before. So before, after, before, after. So now things are really showing completely dark and all the way through for this drawing. Now, the other thing that I like to do to add a little bit of weight to it, and I don't know if that would be the right uh, term for it, but that's the way I like to describe it is once I have my drawing in and I have the uh, basis of the design with the colors and everything done, I like to put a black stroke on all of the artwork. For me, it just makes it look better when I have that in place and it reveals any um, blemishes that your scan got. So you see all of the little uh, black dots that are now showing up and that's letting me know that if I were to clip this and bring this into something else and maybe put like a blur or some type of glare or a lighting effect, some of this could very well go ahead and show up. So what this does is it allows for me to be able to come in, uh, take all of those outside blemishes out, and it kind of allows you to do the exact same thing that we were doing earlier when we were looking at the dots that were showing up in the colored areas of our uh, drawing of Darkwing. So, here we go, take it, delete it. Now we don't have any of those dots to worry about. Then, again, let me zoom in so I can make sure I clip the part that I'm only looking to clip and nothing more. Here we go. All right, that's done. And then, yep, I knew there was always, there's always a few left. So let me see. All right. Bam, there we go. All right, see, now we've got a full on dark wing duck here that we're able to work with. Now, the next thing that I will look to do is first of all save, so again, uh, I don't have any issues here, is this is where I start to do a little bit of airbrush detail. Um, so what I do is I put a layer at the top of all of my layers and I just call them shadow. And I adjust it already to multiply so I can get a really good dark in there if I'm looking to get it. And this is where you can start to put in some of your not real fine details because again this is uh, more so cartoon style because I will be doing videos later that show a bit more on how to bring a little bit more depth to your drawings but this is what I would do in the case of something like this with Darkwing Duck so I've just selected the parts of the hat that I want to be able to add a little bit of a shadow to and then go in with a nice little brush uh, maybe make it a little bit bigger because that'll give it more of a feathered effect on it. No pun intended with this being a duck. But uh, be able to go in and do something like that. Hit it with that on the end there. Also do the same thing there. And then now we're starting to get into more depth. So before, after. 
and see it it allows for me to be able to have a bit more control on how the shadowing is going to show up I can even do the same thing uh, I try not to put all of the shadows on one layer because certain ones are going to need different amounts of uh, size and brush but like for instance his oops his uh, turtleneck here we go his turtleneck I would want to give it just a little bit of shadow um, because his bill is in front of it um, and above it technically so doing something like that see gives it a little bit more depth and detail there um, another area that I would want to go ahead and hit is the light area of his actual um, jacket um, being up under that cape. So I've selected the areas that I do want to manipulate. Then I go on in, make another layer, darken it, make it a multiply. Uh, also again, I call it shadow. And then go in with my brush and do more of the same. And the closer it is to the edge, the darker it would end up being technically. So then you see how that is. It's starting to show a bit more depth there. But what I would want to do is just turn this down just a little bit with the opacity. So then I'm able to manipulate again that a bit more than I generally would. And then what you can do also is go in and give shadowing to uh, the parts of his body that will be getting hit with this as well. So uh, case in point would be uh, to go to where his feathers and everything would be. So I can go here, hit that, then uh, also go into this portion of his jacket only. Uh, so then I can hit something going along there. Then I go on up, create another shadow layer. Turn its settings on to multiply so I get a good darkness to it and then go in and do one of those Oop, a little bit too much and do the same thing there so then again that gives a little bit of depth to it and then I can go in and also do the same type of thing for the inside of his cape again label your layer go ahead and set that on over to multiply and then go on in boom there you go and then maybe hit that right there for the arm see now he's got a bit more depth the only thing that I would hit again with this would actually be to hit his mask a little bit so we get that and then I would also want to do his eyelids um, right there and right there and then create a completely different layer especially for this because I don't want to shadow his entire face but I do want to just give a little bit of depth to it just a tad bit not that much and so I'll turn down the size of my brush yeah maybe to something like that and then I go in see there you go now you've got it where you've got all of the depth there and everything now for me I will consider this to be a done um, complete drawing but I just don't want to end it there what I would do more so is then go ahead and take this layer here that I turn black for his entire uh, body so the ink shows through completely 100% black I'd make a copy of that bring that to the top layer take that stroke effect off of that layer there turn the opacity completely off so then it becomes a clear layer then go in and do one final bevel to it so now you see how I have um, if you saw it happen see there we go and then I can go in and do a complete effect to the entire drawing so I have now the highlights showing in there that kind of shows up really cool 
um, I can bring more depth. You can see it in here with the shadowing of his face. Um, if I want to give it a little bit of a color, so let's say I wanted to make it a little bit purple because he's wearing purple, uh, I can do that and then I can control how this is going to look. So control the depth of it back and forth, back and forth to get what you're looking for. Because again, some people get caught up into saying, oh, it needs to look a certain way. A person's style is their style. And it's all about what you think is going to work out really well. So I hope you guys definitely enjoyed this. This is the actual first step-by-step -step tutorial on my version of what it takes to be able to color in your own drawings within Photoshop. Uh, please leave me a comment if there's something that you have a question on or another style of tutorial like this that you would like to see. I would really like to be able to present these things to you guys and we just help move this artwork movement along. So thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys later. Bye.